السلام علیکم خواتین حضرات وسیم ایسڈ ویلکم سی یو ٹو لیکچر نمبر تھرٹی فور آف برانڈ مینجمنٹ ایم کے ٹی سکس ٹو فور ایٹ دی ورچوئل یونیورسٹی آف پاکستان آئی واز ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا کاپی اسٹریٹجی ان دا پریویس لیکچر اینڈ ہیڈ کورڈ ٹاپکس لائک اگر دا واٹر کاپی اسٹریٹجی از کہ دا واٹ از اٹس امپارٹنس اینڈ اگر دا ویر اٹ اسٹیمس فرام اینڈ ویر اٹ لیڈز اس ٹو and the guiding principles that we need to have in order to develop a copy strategy and uh, then the capabilities and the guidance that we need in order to assess that uh, a copy strategy is uh, just about the right most compatible strategy I and mean, fitting into the overall strategic framework that uh, the time ended. And uh, I'm going to pick up the threads from uh, the way I left in the previous lecture. So let us... Uh, develop and uh, the understanding of uh, the, what uh, specific purpose a copy strategy uh, serves. I did talk about uh, the one or two points uh, the which uh, the fall in this uh, the ambit, uh, one being that um, a copy strategy uh, provides continuity uh, to the company in, in its relations with uh, the ad agency and also uh, within the company, the company can maintain consistency uh, in terms of all the advertising efforts and uh, the plans and executions. In the absence of uh, the well-structured uh, the copy strategy, the chances are that we shall be wandering off and going straight uh, here and there in terms of uh, the, all these strategic shifts. So uh, the, it really uh, the binds us to uh, the one uh, the course of action that, uh, that we have taken and uh, the, it really keeps us uh, the, related to uh, that course of action which is going to lay the foundation for the changes in a way that are compatible with our strategic moves. It also helps your brand achieve distinctiveness and the stature in a competitive market only because it gives the brand a very specific character and that character is developed in the minds of the consumers with the help of your consistent actions that you could take, the actions which are meaningful, the actions which are easily understandable by customers and consumers. So this also is an extension of the purpose which I talked earlier, the meaning, the maintaining continuity. So out of that continuity and consistency stems this very purpose which gives your brand a level of distinctiveness. It uh, also uh, provides the, the ad agency, uh, the direction and uh, the guidance uh, within prescribed limits. You define uh, all the parameters in terms of uh, the brand's positioning. And uh, when I talk about brand's positioning, it goes without saying that uh, all other elements have to be taken into account. And uh, that defines all the parameters and the limits within which the agency will always exercise its creative imagination. If you think that the agency is transcending you know, those limits and going into areas which are not really relevant to the brand or which are the ones which are to be tackled somewhere down the line, then you might as well like to keep those as those areas meant for the evolutionary process and um, like to deal with, with those with the one by one as the time warrants and not immediately. So this is uh, another thing which uh, the good copy strategy the does to you and a very specific purpose that it serves. You may look upon yourself as uh, the one of the architects of uh, the, the branding decisions and uh, the branding strategies but um, the fact remains that um, in order for uh, consistency to uh, take place in the company, it is of utmost importance that uh, the strategies are um, defined and um, laid down in a very well structured way. Because um, who knows whether you are going to be there or not? Who knows whether your marketing manager is going to be there or not? Also, who knows, you're going to sever your relationship with the ad agency and may appoint a new agent. 
So in those uh, the circumstances and uh, the keeping in view these kind of uh, the possibilities, it is always good to have uh, your uh, copy strategy in a structured, the well-defined form, which is understandable by anybody who reads that. And not only the, the copy strategy, you must also be recording uh, all the results that uh, you achieve uh, as um, a consequence of uh, execution of that uh, the strategy, because um, a record of all that leads you to make uh, the rightmost decisions okay, the under changing circumstances. So we can say about uh, a copy strategy that uh, while it is very concrete and specific about uh, the brand's objectives, it also is uh, the flexible, the meaning it also carries an element of flexibility so that uh, it provides latitude toward uh, the changing uh, decisions uh, in view of uh, the changing circumstances because uh, it is the copy strategy uh, which is the backbone of uh, all the changes uh, which uh, are, you are going to incorporate uh, in the total uh, the framework. So uh, it has to be able to a little flexible also to deal with uh, the changing needs and expectations uh, for which the process of evolution goes on, on and on. In this connection, I would like to talk about um, a few of the factors which are very closely related here and uh, which are the ones uh, I have been talking about earlier also. But since you know, they uh, belong here at this stage um, very well, so I think it will not be justice done if uh, I did not talk about these all over again in this very context. It serves the purpose of defining the basic selling idea in very clear terms. It makes sure that it is new and it makes sure that it is a solution which is being offered to a problem and it makes sure that the selling idea which the copy is talking about is thought provoking and it causes consumers to think about your brand and then uh, adopting it uh, for a long time. So this is uh, one of the basic purposes which uh, the copy strategy serves. It is only because of that. Now, this is not to say that if there was no copy strategy, uh, you know, this purpose is not going to be served. What I'm saying is that uh, you've got to be very logical and consistent when you develop a copy strategy. And uh, you certainly will be much better off if you developed uh, this kind of uh, the copy strategy statement uh, for the sake of consistency and for the sake of continuity and for the sake of making sure that all the elements that you have considered uh, really fit into one cohesive whole. And uh, that is the beauty of this strategy and that's the purpose it serves. Now, as an extension of uh, this continuity and consistency, what I can say is that uh, it is the naturalness uh, which comes to the surface and uh, it is the natural virtues of uh, the product uh, which uh, come out of this kind of a strategy uh, because uh, whatever you're talking about are not only facts, are those facts which are common sensible and are those facts which uh, are related to the associations uh, which not only that you're trying to develop but which are the ones which uh, are going to be accepted by your uh, the consumers and uh, the, you are talking about the promises and the delivery of the promises the, in a way the, which really makes the whole thing deliverable. So you are not communicating something the, which uh, the, seems to have been extracted in uh, an unnatural way or in an artificial way. You are talking about something which the consumer can relate to himself or herself immediately. So that is the purpose with which uh, the copy strategy serves because it has come to the surface after taking into consideration so many different strategic elements and uh, making sure nothing is unrelated, nothing is haphazard, nothing is ad hoc. Another um, like the purpose which uh, the copy strategy serves is it makes sure that um, it appeals to the self-interest of the consumer, which 
essentially means uh, that can the consumer could associate the product with uh, some service to with him or her. If the consumer can develop uh, some kind of um, in, an attitude toward the product, he is going to buy that. And uh, that is what is meant by the developing the self-interest. So this is another the purpose to which um, a good copy strategy serves. And um, again, you know, there are a few guidelines to which you have to keep in mind to make sure that all this does take place. And uh, I will talk about all those uh, when I summarize uh, the whole concept in a short while. Another uh, the purpose uh, which uh, the good copy strategy serves is that uh, it makes the, the whole strategy and it makes uh, the whole campaign look like uh, your own custom made. The campaign never looks like the one copied from uh, some other competitors. It really gives the impression to the consumers that it is something very original and it is very distinctive and uh, thereby it remains very memorable. And the memorable in the sense that uh, it creates an action uh, because uh, it delivers a promise. It makes sure that uh, it is an idea that really can be associated to uh, your product and uh, not uh, those of competitors. Meaning very distinctive and uh, that uh, the distinctness uh, gives it the uh, the colors of uh, the something which is custom made especially for the purpose of your brand and your company. A good copy strategy could also serve the purpose of uh, not letting the you wander off. It really keeps you focused on the point of significance. It um, talks about the reasons the why consumers they should prefer your product uh, the to those of competitors. And it does keep the campaign very close to the attributes which are promised. So that is what is meant by uh, the not wandering off. So this again is a very, very important purpose which uh, the good copy strategy serves. A copy strategy that provides us with um, a common benchmark with which everyone within the company and the ad agency uses to evaluate the advertising submissions. Those advertising submissions may relate to the total campaign or the submissions may relate to the individual ads from time to time forming a part of the total campaign. The fact remains that we have the benchmark and we have standards, in other words, against which we can gauge the, the level of um, or the properties of the campaign which the ad agency has uh, come up with. Another purpose served by a good copy strategy is that uh, it lets us save a considerable amount of time, meaning creative time, which otherwise is uh, wasted by getting into the minor details. Now this relates to something which I talked about earlier what this means is that uh, through a copy strategy statement, that we are in a position to uh, make decisions on uh, the basic uh, the copy matters. And uh, the once we have those uh, the basic copy decisions, review them every time uh, we are working at uh, an individual piece of advertising that may form a total campaign. Uh, so much for the, the purposes that uh, a copy strategy serves. And uh, after having developed an understanding of uh, what a copy strategy is, uh, what are the fundamental drivers that uh, let us uh, craft this strategy, and uh, what are the considerations and uh, whose responsibility it is uh, to uh, develop it, and whose responsibility is it to see to it that uh, it is very effective. Let me now uh, summarize the whole concept by talking about the, the fundamental considerations which are the backbone of a good copy strategy. Now, this summary is going to be very simple, but nevertheless, very important. Number one point which we must keep in our mind all the time while we're dealing with a copy strategy, that our communication has got to be simple. This is what we have learned. 
Number two is that uh, when the discommunication again has got to the portray the real character again, of the product. And uh, number three consideration is that uh, it has to be interesting enough for the reader and for the viewer. And it is going to be interesting uh, for them only if uh, we are focusing uh, on the main uh, uh, the product identity and uh, if we are very accurate in uh, the talking about the, the real character of the product and the benefits which it delivers. Because if we do that, it means that we have been very focused and that we had considered all the elements in their totality, the, the way they fit into the overall whole. So it has to be a very cohesive whole. Another uh, consideration, which is uh, number four, is that uh, we've got to take uh, the full advantage of the medium that we are using. The press and uh, magazines, uh, the television, whatever, we've got to fully capitalize on the power of the media. Number five uh, consideration is uh, our communication and uh, the, the copy strategy it has to be able to demonstrate the real point. If uh, we were to summarize the whole thing it has one point, that we have to look for that, whether we are talking about it or not. And um, lastly, we have to make sure that the, the copy strategy and whatever has gone into it do talk about something very specific and something very thought-provoking so that your consumers really can relate the product to themselves by thinking that this product is of some service to them. And uh, once you know, they have uh, they developed that kind of an attitude or that kind of a feeling, um, the chances are that you have uh, made your sales. So that is uh, all for uh, the, the copy strategy. And uh, the, the points which I have summarized are the basic constituents of a good uh, strategy. And if you think that these constituents are uh, performing their functions very well, because they fit into each other very well, then the copy strategy is going to be a true reflection of the brand persona and the brand's positioning. And that is what the good brand managers are out to achieve. With this, discussion on the um, development side of advertising stands concluded. And uh, we have seen very comprehensively that uh, it deals with uh, the brand persona and brand's positioning. I pointed out in the beginning of this uh, discussion that um, advertising deals with uh, the two different steps or phases. The one is the developmental side, and that's what I've talked about. Let us now get to move on to the other side, which is the, the executional side. Uh, the executing advertising is uh, as important as developing advertising is, because it is through execution of advertising that we make sure the way we stand on the customer response effects and also make sure that uh, every response that uh, is intended uh, to be evoked with the, with the help of advertising is very effective and uh, it takes place uh, very uh, effectively and um, there is um, the, the desired action on part of the, uh, the consumer to go for the, the final sale. So the executing advertising uh, the deals with uh, the target market reach, uh, the media selection, media coverage, message frequency, and uh, the ad content or copy, which uh, I just talked about earlier. While executing uh, advertising, the biggest question which must flash into our minds should be the why not factor, meaning why is it that so many campaigns do not succeed? And uh, why is it that uh, there's such a tremendous amount of work which uh, has gone into the advertising has not uh, been fruitful? To be able to answer this question, the fact is that uh, we have to go back to our understanding of um, the customer response effects the meaning the hierarchy of uh, the customer responses. 
you will recall that uh, that uh, the process starts with um, the stage of awareness and the fact is that awareness is the most important starting point unless awareness on part of the consumers is there there is no way that we really can proceed further the meaning the other uh, response effects are not going to take shape unless awareness is there let me explain uh, the, this concept with uh, the different kind of um, an illustration and uh, you will see that this definitely relates with the one which uh, the was uh, the exhibited in uh, the one of the earlier lectures uh, the, but nevertheless this is the one which really demonstrates a very close relationship between the first effect which is awareness and the last effect which is action we certainly have um, effects in between and the effects of uh, the comprehension retention uh, the no question but uh, the, this illustration basically the develops the relationship between awareness and action now if you take a look at this you will see that um, at every the stage of uh, the response effects we are showing two different bars the one is dark blue and the other is light blue and uh, you can see the successive stages and uh, with every successive stage the, the bars kind of recede the meaning they decline and uh, the reason is that you have to have a, a high level of awareness or in other words the highest level that you see is at the stage of awareness and the lowest level that you the witness is at the stage of purchase which is the final action so this is a conclusion that uh, when we start with the, the first uh, the stage of effects and which is awareness it is at the highest level and the moment that we go up the hierarchy you will see a reduction of uh, those effects in relation to those particular phases so the meaning uh, awareness has got to be the highest and comprehension which is the next step has to be lower than that and intention which is the next one lower than that and uh, the purchase or the action has to be the lowest so this is the one conclusion which we can very easily draw from this illustration now if you take a look at this um, in an inverse fashion the meaning if we go back from the, the purchase stage back to the awareness stage it means that in order to have a higher level of purchase that we have to increase the level of awareness and we can also conclude that uh, in order to increase the level of purchase we not only have to increase the level of awareness but the level of awareness has also got to increase uh, in a bigger proportion because the level of awareness is eventually going to recede to rephrase the whole thing let me put it in the very simple words and that is in order to have a certain level of purchase we have to have a level of awareness which is higher than that if you want to increase the level of purchase by say five units if we were to translate that into units then the level of awareness should not increase by five units rather it should increase maybe by 10 units or 15 units because it there has to be a very high level of awareness in order to have a decent level of purchase what is going to happen from awareness it is going to go down the while it passes through comp comprehension it will go further down while passing through intention and it will go further down when it reaches the purchase stage so we've got to make sure that the awareness has got to be uh, at a very high level there is uh, no method uh, to my knowledge which really can uh, quantify as to what should be the level of awareness a certain level of uh, the purchase the meaning I'm at a loss to develop a the mathematical relationship between the two all I can tell you is that the level of awareness has got to be very high so that the, what you extract out of that level in terms of the purchases should be at a decent level that is the 
lesson. A higher level of purchase that brings you the more usage. It is a reflection of uh, the fact um, either that you are gaining the more customers or your existing customers are using the, your product more and more or a combination of both. The chances are it is a combination of both. And in both the cases, what you're doing is you are developing loyal customers. So the basic objective of uh, the communication is uh, the creating awareness and increasing awareness and then maintaining awareness until the time that we have a very high level of awareness regarding any brand there is no way that we can uh, go through these successive stages of uh, the consumer response effects and um, thereby creating or actuating the, the very final action which translates in terms of sales in order to achieve that uh, we have uh, so many different tools at our disposal and uh, whatever tools we are going to use, keep one thing in your mind that these tools are going to be used for your target market. These tools are not meant for general public. And these tools are, you know, the television channels and uh, in the newspapers, not only newspapers, but uh, the different parts of newspapers because you're dealing with uh, the target market and uh, the target market in relation to uh, the, your uh, the tools uh, to, to, to reach them, uh, you have to be uh, the very uh, clear about uh, the, what parts of uh, the newspapers really are compatible with uh, the brand's positioning. Uh, the, you have uh, a section on sports, the, you have a section on business, the, you have a section on uh, the international politics, the so on and so forth. So all these sections can have a direct relationship with uh, the, the brand's positioning and therefore target market. So be very careful about uh, the choosing the tools because you are passing through now a stage of execution. And execution is something, I did took the talk about this factor in uh, the one of my lectures the earlier that uh, the execution of uh, not only advertising, uh, of all the, the functions of management is taking on an added importance because uh, there's a general thinking and the strategies uh, can be formulated by creative people. There's no question about that. But uh, when it comes to uh, execution, everyone has got to be very, very alert and very sensitive to timetables and timelines and uh, the time frameworks within which you've got to produce results. So whether you are a genius or just an average worker, everybody has got to take the objectives uh, which have been broken down into so many different uh, units and subunits uh, the very effectively and efficiently. Back to uh, the tools uh, which we have at our disposal in order to execute the advertising campaign uh, which we developed as uh, the first phase of advertising. Another tool which uh, that we have is magazines. And when it comes to magazines, again, you've got to be very careful about which part of the magazine you place your ad into. I know there are so many cost constraints. You know, anybody would like to go on the cover, the back cover, for example. If not that, inside of the back cover or inside of the front cover. The question is, do we have the resources to afford that? Um, and we've got to be able to answer all those questions and uh, then look for answers which are best suited in light of our circumstances. You must look at uh, the radio, not only you know, the radio as a medium, but the timings your target market are uh, part of because they know what program is being aired at what time. And uh, with um, the growth of uh, the quality radio stations in our country, this uh, the medium really has taken on an added importance. And uh, starting with uh, the youngsters, uh, right up to those segments uh, which uh, could be very serious in terms of their uh, the habits and uh, the social cultural values, uh, you really can pick up a good program uh, well suited uh, to the, your target market. You must also be mindful of uh, the one fact, how uh, your target customers travel and commute to the, the place of work. Uh, while they go to the place of work, what kinds of uh, the channels they tune to, 
and uh, what kinds of uh, advertising they get exposed to. For example, if they travel by the bus, you have advertising inside of the buses or you have advertising outside of the buses. Whether they travel by buses or motorbikes or motor cars is not really material. So what is material is the kind of media they get exposed to the on way to work and then back home. Hoardings, advertising on buses, and there are so many different forms of advertising that manifest themselves in the outside environment. You've got to be mindful of that. Another factor which you have to take into consideration is your target market hooked on to the internet. If they really are into surfing, then you've got to be careful and mindful of that because that might help you if you are doing something in relation to direct marketing, for example. The question here is all of the factors and all of the tools that you have at your disposal you have to choose a mix of all those uh, in the most optimal way, given your resources and uh, the, given the kind of punch which is your objective. Given the, the level of uh, the consumer response effects that you are dealing with, uh, you are going to make your decisions. Because uh, everything that you choose means cost. And all costs add up. If you end up with uh, the mixed bag, which is not affordable, then it is no good. You've got to stay within your financial limits. And uh, you've got to make uh, the whole um, communication uh, very effective. And uh, therefore, uh, the advertising, uh, while um, it is uh, being uh, considered for execution, uh, it has got to be given special attention uh, because, uh, like I said, it is uh, the most visible, uh, the most dynamic, and uh, it is something which really emotionalizes uh, the facts, and uh, those facts gets, get, get translated into actions. So you've got to be very careful about that. You also have to be very careful about uh, the message frequency, because uh, once you have uh, chosen a combination of uh, the tools, uh, you, you've got to consider the frequency with which advertising is going to be kicked off. If it is radio, how many spots a day? Or how many spots within one hour? And in what time? If it is uh, television commercial, um, how many spots again? If it is um, print media, how many assertions? Uh, which papers, which magazines? And uh, all these details. The important thing to consider here is that uh, the frequency matters a lot. If, you know, because of uh, paucity of funds, uh, we think that uh, we should be uh, distributing our campaign in a way that uh, we cover the most parts of the year, but maybe it is uh, not a good decision. I said maybe. And uh, if we decide to uh, concentrate our advertising uh, the frequency in a way that uh, we end up talking about the whole campaign within just about a couple of months or a few months, uh, maybe it will work better. So it is here that you have to decide, given your circumstances, whether you would like to go for something you know, concentrated or you would like to go for something you know, frequented. The basic principle that we have to keep in mind, especially in relation to consumer items, that uh, there has to be a base frequency uh, which allows us to keep talking with uh, our target market around the year. If it is not possible given our financial circumstances, that's something else, but preferably we should try to do that. And uh, then make decisions, when to concentrate our communication because if you're dealing with a seasonal item, for example, which sells uh, very well, during the month of Ramadan, you have to start communicating about that before the month sets in. Now, this is one example. If you are dealing in the line of the cold drinks, you know when to advertise. I don't have to tell you about that. So similarly, if you are dealing with the items which are kind of 
hot sellers during uh, the winter months, then you should uh, concentrate uh, your advertising and communication uh, in those very months. Rather, before those months could have set in. So this basically is the concept of uh, concentration versus the distribution of your uh, the communication thrust. The fact is that uh, the strong brands uh, the keep talking around the year, regardless of seasonality and regardless of uh, the low months and the high months. Those are the brands uh, which are very strong and which are very powerful. And uh, the, those are the brands uh, which you see a lot of hoardings of uh, around the year all around the country. And uh, that shows us the significance of uh, the concept of uh, the communication. You've got to be there okay, out in the field, in the market, talking with your target market in one way or the other just to be in their minds. Otherwise, they're going to forget you. But that's a very important lesson. The next um, question okay, which should okay, come into our minds is uh, how to okay, make sure that the copy that okay, we have okay, put together is really going to be effective when it goes into the execution stage. We have talked quite a bit about awareness and comprehension, and awareness and comprehension were really taken into consideration while we develop our advertising, and now it is going to be the stage when that piece of advertising is going to be tested. One approach is to test the copy of advertising before running it nationwide. If it's a press ad, you can go for one of the magazines or you know, one of the papers and keep it very limited in scope and see the response of your customers. If it really comes up to your expectations and shows you the potential of taking you all along that hierarchy of the customer's response effects, you should look upon that as something very viable and something workable. If it is uh, a television commercial, uh, I would say that uh, the fragmented uh, the media really has given us the advantage of uh, the testing um, TV commercials also. This was not the case like uh, 10 to 15 years ago. And uh, you had to go for uh, the national network. And whether it worked or not worked, it was a question of your fate. With the fragmentation of the media, this is a tremendous opportunity for people like us to test our TV commercial. They go to one of the channels and test it there, see the customer's response, and they make the final decision. The chances are if you had made the television commercial based on all the considerations which I talked about in the previous lecture, relating the copy strategy, then um, it will be okay. But you never know that something may go wrong. And even if something is not wrong, you may like to bring about certain improvements. And uh, you may get some very interesting and fascinating kind of uh, observations from your uh, the customers, which you may not have taken into consideration while you made it. So wait until you get uh, the results of that test and uh, then go nationwide and kick off your campaign. It is uh, needless to say that um, any the copy which is uh, really based on uh, uh, needs of uh, the customers is going to help you in the marketplace. And uh, with that, we are now going to talk about how to reinforce the message. We have talked about um, the different tools that we have at our disposal, and uh, we have talked about uh, the testing the copy, which uh, is in place. And uh, let us now talk about the need about how much to reinforce the message and uh, how frequently to reinforce that. That's what it really means. This is uh, a hard fact of uh, the communication, that uh, the message of communication has got to be continuous, it's got to be repetitive, and it has got to be reinforcing. Building awareness, 
comprehension and intention will bring in a good customer response. No question about that. But it will diminish in its effect if we stop talking with the customers. You will recall the examples uh, you know, of uh, the cars and sunglasses and uh, the printers, which I talked about in the previous lecture. And uh, we analyzed how important it is to look into each and every the phase of the response effects and uh, then reinforce our message in relation to that particular phase. So that says it all in terms of uh, the reinforcing the message and uh, the maintaining uh, a high level of awareness. What you really have to uh, consider is uh, what is the, what could be the least expensive uh, tool of uh, the reinforcing the message. You may have spent a lot of money uh, when you kicked off your campaign, but when it comes to uh, repeating it and reinforcing it, uh, you can do a lot many different things whether you can bring about a change in the mix of uh, your tools and uh, you also can do something with your uh, the TV, the commercials. You can go for uh, what they call adaptations. Instead of showing uh, the complete uh, commercial, uh, you can show relevant portions in a very brief form, reminding the, the customer of your presence. So reinforcement is um, of... Um, utmost importance because uh, it um, keeps the level of awareness and comprehension alive. And if these two levels are alive, then the chances are the customers are going to retain that information and uh, based on that retention, there will be action. Another consideration that you must take into account while you go through this process of uh, reinforcement is what marketing people call a copy wear out. When you talk about something repetitively and over and over again, that thing loses its originality and charm. So what I'm saying is that at that stage, you've got to bring about certain change in the copy of your strategy. It doesn't mean, and it must not mean, that you change the strategy. You keep the strategy the same. If you think customers are getting kind of bored, then you must change those tactics and you must bring about some you know, level of change in the copy strategy. And here I would like to take you back to my lecture on uh, responsibilities of uh, the ad agency. You will recall look, that I talked about um, the need for the ad agency to bring you uh, a few alternatives because uh, among those alternatives, you're going to keep some for uh, uh, the future in, the, in relation to innovations, in relation to this kind of a scenario where you seem to be running into a copy wear out scenario. So that's a consideration which has to be kept in mind, a very important one. So much for uh, advertising as uh, a tool of uh, communication. And that takes us to the next one, which is promotions. Promotions are the ones which really stimulate action on part of customers. No matter how good is the copy and uh, the response effects like awareness and comprehension, it may still uh, not actuate the customer to take the final action and buy your brand. So what do you do there? It is at this point that uh, the promotions come in and promotions really supplement uh, what has been done by advertising. If uh, the role of advertising is to the, create the pull and advertising seems to be creating that pull, then uh, the role of uh, promotions is to create the push uh, so that uh, the customers and I mean the consumers could really feel pushed uh, to go to the product and buy that. Promotions uh, could play a very dominant role could, when it comes to could, introducing new products because uh, could, you're out there to create the trial on part of the, the consumers uh, who must try your product and uh, you get into the, this activity in the hope that uh, that will uh, automatically bring uh, your um, consumers uh, to a uh, higher level of uh, the response effects. 
that they do not forget that the advertising is there and it is already the working and playing its role. Now that you have uh, your promotions working on the other end and these two coming together are maintaining a balance between that pull and push. So the role of promotions from that point of view cannot be overemphasized. It has to be there in order to make sure that um, a push is created and um, a trial is generated so that uh, the consumer knows what the product is all about and uh, if the product really is worth its salt and uh, it carries all the promises and uh, delivers those, then the consumer who has tried the product is um, going to come back. We have seen uh, the advertising and uh, the promotions they do complement each other and uh, we also are clear that uh, the advertising and promotions the must work together in order to create the, the maximum amount of uh, promotional mileage for the brand, for the brand to have uh, the more and more power. But before the brand can um, amass that power, we've got to make sure that uh, the brand has a very good level of awareness and comprehension and uh, the brand is tried in the marketplace because uh, the once that trial takes place, and the customers are going to get hooked on to your brand and it is only at that um, stage that they make up their mind to come back and back to your brand. So promotions while working at the time of the advertising taking place play a very important role. Promotions have two different types. The one is the trade promotions and the other is consumer promotions. Why is it that we really have to get into trade promotions and why is it that we also have to get into consumer promotions and why is it that we really have to conduct these promotions at the same time is going to be the topic of discussion in my next lecture. I, for the time being, would like to wrap up whatever I've talked about and to give you a recap of uh, the topics discussed during today's lecture. I started talking about advertising as uh, the one of the tools of uh, communication and not only the one of the tools but also the most dominant, the most dynamic and uh, the most visible tool. What it takes to uh, develop advertising, I told you that there are two different phases that we go through. The one is uh, developing advertising itself and uh, the second phase is of um, execution. But while we develop advertising, but we have to be very clear about the copy strategy because copy is something which is the dominant part of advertising itself. And uh, there are certain fundamentals that we have to take into consideration before we come up with um, the, the copy strategy. But the fundamentals are that we have to create a net impression which is based on the selling idea. We have to talk about the, the brand persona which basically is the personality and character of the brand and um, we also have to base everything on the brand's positioning because uh, that is the, the main thing which uh, we would like uh, to be in the minds of the customers. And then we talked about the effectiveness of uh, the, the copy strategy and in relation to the effectiveness, uh, the responsibilities uh, that were discussed uh, in uh, the terms of uh, the ad agencies' responsibilities and in terms of uh, the company's responsibilities. It is the responsibility of the ad agency to see to it that uh, the ad the campaign is very effective and it is the responsibility of the company to see to it that it really is effective. There are certain fundamentals and guiding principles that you have to consider for that. And um, then I talked about uh, executing advertising in terms of the tools, the meaning television and uh, newspapers and magazines and a host of other uh, the media that you have at your disposal. That brought the discussion on advertising to an end. And I had just started talking about uh, the topic of promotions when the lecture seemed to come to an end. 
I will pick up my lecture from where I'm leaving it uh, the next time. Allah Hafiz and thank you very much.